Welcome back to Lehigh Valley Discourse. I'm Arnie Lichten, and we're talking about bicycle safety and bicycle heaven here in the Lehigh Valley and beyond with CAT Administrative Assistant Meg Buck and CAT Director Steve Schmidt. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Arnie. Thanks for having us. Meg, tell us a little bit about yourself. I am the mother of two. I'm a full-time student as well as working part-time for CAT. Um, I am a, a college student with the University of Wisconsin Superior, and we bring our family of four everywhere we go on bicycles. Do you have a car? We do not have a car. We sold our car January third. We've been car free for almost two and a half months. Two and a half months, and you, Steve? I think you've been car free for a lot longer than that. Twenty six years. We're going on twenty six years this year. Tell us a little bit about yourself, please, Arnie. I, I, first of all, I just want to thank you because I know that you've been kind of a long term. Uh, factor at CAT, really. Uh, you know, you, you came in quite a few years ago and took both the mechanic class and the traffic skills class, and I think, you know, having you out there in the community and doing a show like this tonight is one of the best things that could happen to CAT. Thank so you very thank much. You. Um, yeah, I started CAT oh, about 26 years ago um, because I noticed that I myself wasn't very happy driving a car. And I, when I first started telling people that I thought they might want to try not driving so much, I noticed a reluctance on their part <laughs> to looking at things my way. So I thought, well, I'm not going to be anti-car. I'm going to be car-free. And I started uh, trying to help people understand their bicycles and how to ride a bicycle in traffic. Um, working with Lanta to try to improve public transportation, working with the municipalities to improve walking and uh, working on the trail so that we had some local options to uh, recreate that we didn't have to drive to. One of the things that uh, has happened in the last year that I think is very exciting is the Bicycle Heaven program making a quantum leap, and a lot of it is the Buck family uh, and people like the Bucks who have decided that they want to give up their cars. We have seen a revolution in this country in the last 10 years, 12 years now. The percentage of people in their 20s who do not own a car has gone from around 20% to around 47% nationwide. The young people of this country, whether it's just they want to be car free or they're smart enough to realize they don't need to buy a car, they can use a Zipcar or Zimride or Get Around or any of these uh, options now are much smarter ways to use a very valuable resource, a very expensive resource uh, using an automobile. I, uh, I'll just throw in, the IRS actually says that owning a car costs 53 cents for every mile you drive it, in addition to the cost of actually buying the car. So if you buy a car for $20,000 and then you drive it for 150,000 miles, that's an additional $75,000. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money that people don't generally factor in to the cost of owning a car. So, Steve, you've been car-free for 26 years. And how do you stay safe on the roads? Well, actually, riding a bicycle in traffic to me is second nature. Uh, I have not fallen off my bike since 1996. There are tricks to it. There are, there are things that you can learn. You know most of them. Uh, I'm learning a few new ones every day. But one thing I've learned is that if you follow the big four, and uh, we're working with the Bethlehem Police Department, isn't Police Commissioner just an incredible spokesperson for biking, by the yes, way? Yes, he I, is. I just love that guy, you know? I get in trouble. I got in trouble. Uh, I uh, wrote an editorial in the paper some years ago, and I said I never understood why we had to promote bicycling. It's just about on par with sex, and we certainly <laughs> don't have to promote sex. So I, didn't, I never really got why we had to promote it. But uh, I will say that uh, the big four are what make you safe, and the big four are don't go through red lights. You shouldn't go through stop signs either, but red lights are really dangerous. You don't want to drive through them. It's disrespectful to all the other people in traffic. Nobody drives through red lights. 
Let's not ride our bikes through red lights either. That's number one. Number two is riding against traffic. You don't want to ride against the traffic stream, particularly on one-way streets. It's a leading cause of death if the cyclist is at fault. So you don't want to ride the wrong way down the street. Another one is don't ride your bike at night with no lights. Okay? That's, believe it or not, the leading cause of death when a cyclist is at fault at night. Yes. No lights. <laughs> no lights. Okay? And the last one is don't ride your bike on the sidewalk, particularly in commercial districts. Uh, I think we all know, like, the block where the Boyd Theater is located. Right? You know, I, I, I hope the Boyd Theater reopens soon. But that block in, on Broad Street on the north side, you see people riding their bikes down that hill on that sidewalk all the time. We, there are plenty of episodes where the cyclist hits somebody walking out of a store. And, the, and kind of the odd thing is that that crash usually presents itself with the bicyclist going to the ER. So in other words, it's usually a bicyclist who breaks his collarbone or his, uh, his wrist or elbow or whatever, sometimes his neck by running into a pedestrian. So that, that's the big four. We want you to try to stay away from those. And one other tip I'll give you is don't ride in the door zone. You're riding down the street. Open every car door in your mind of those parked cars. Just open it up in your head and then ride 18 inches out. Don't swerve in and out. If you would like to see pictures of these things, they're available online. Just type in uh, Pennsylvania Bicycle Drivers Manual into your, uh, into your favorite search engine, and it'll bring up the uh, actual manual, and you can see pictures of exactly what I'm talking about that spell it out for you. <laughs> So, you are a Le uh, League of American Bicyclists licensed cycling instructor. Is that correct? Yes. We have um, 30, 35 of them here in the region right now. It kind of goes back and forth. Depends on whether or not you include uh, Warren County and New Jersey, too. Um, most of them trained by uh, myself or sometime with uh, the help of uh, Frank Pavlik. Uh, Frank is my, is my mechanic guru. I am so happy when I'm riding down Broadway Hill and I'm going 55 miles an hour that a master mechanic with 30 years of experience has, has checked out my bike. Uh, I, I am so pleased that I have had Frank in my life for 20 years and he has really made a difference in my bicycling. About half of all crashes are caused by mechanical problems. So right off the bat, I always get a laugh. People say, I know how to ride a bike. And I know when a person says that to me, they probably know very, very little uh, yes, you learned how to ride a bike. You learned how to balance on a bike when you're seven. But, um, and really, a bike is a beautifully simple machine in certain respects. But, you know, it, it takes somebody like Frank to show you how, how beautifully complex, um, much like a flower or, or something else in nature, uh, a bicycle can be. Very simple, yet yeah, very complex, and I'm very, very thankful. And then again, we have um, Scott, too. We heard from Scott earlier. What enthusiasm. This guy, you know, he's, he's taught, I believe, the number for last year, 1,600 kids last year. Basic bike information. 1,600 kids. I'm, I, he just, he, I'm in awe of, of both of those guys. Um, they're both certified cycling instructors by the league. And so. what are the qualifications for that? Well, it's a three-day course. Um, there's a fee. You pay the league. You do have to pass Traffic Skills 101, Smart Cycling Traffic Skills 101, and that's the course that you're being taught to teach. So you really have to master that course. You can't just pass it. You need to, um, I believe the score is 90% or above, that you have to get on that course and, and the uh, um, uh, road test as well as the written test. And... Um, you know, class participation and so forth. Uh, you have to know. You have to know your biking in traffic. You have to know how to ride a bike in traffic safely. There's some really extraordinary leadership at CAT. You know, between Steve and Frank and Scott and all the other LCIs that are there and all the other guys. You know, Frank was talking about all the mechanics that are there that donate their time. You know, all the people that just know their way around the bike. There are so many people there that are experts on riding in the Lehigh Valley and riding in traffic. You know, my husband and I got involved with that, with Cat. My husband had been doing some research online about bicycle riding in the Lehigh Valley, and he came across Cat. And every Friday afternoon, Steve has a director's lunch at Mexico Lindo in downtown Bethlehem. And my husband started going every week just to talk to Steve. And, um, you know, just through that, we became members of Cat. We started going there every Thursday night and every Saturday afternoon. And you can talk to anybody in the shop, and you can have just 
awesome conversations about where to go, how to get there, what to do on your way there. Um, y- y- there's really very little, if anything, that you can do in the Lehigh Valley that you can't do on a bike. I mean, w- we'll go anywhere. Well, Steve, I, I, being a cyclist myself, I've found that it's a lot easier to go north-south out of the valley than it is going east-west because of the really narrow, narrow shoulders on most of the east-west thoroughfares, or they are just hugely filled with traffic. What do you think about that? Well, uh, that's a sort of an interesting perspective. I rode yesterday to see my granddaughter. She lives over near Queen City Airport uh, with my son and daughter-in-law, and uh, I rode out uh, Broad Street, Hanover Avenue, um, rode across the Hamilton Street Bridge, and then um, up past the Parkettes and, uh, you know, on out. Uh, I don't use Lehigh Street, but once I got up over the hill, to go up the hill, but once I got up and over the hill at 8th and Mack Boulevard and so forth, I got back on Lehigh Street and rode back out Lehigh Street. I would say that it, it's a, it's a you, you need perhaps to come in for some of our destination rides that we have at 6 o'clock on Thursday evenings and um, 10 and 2, and we'll take you right out on these various destinations. Uh, but, you know, you do have, as, as Frank pointed out, there's buses leaving every half hour from Broad and Getter. They pull into East and Center Square. They have bike racks on the front. On Monday, I, I worked in East and I took the bus. Um, I would say that it's harder, and I, I'll, I'll go along with Yannicka on this one. I, I think that it's harder to go west and north because of the wind. And I'm always really annoyed when I get ready to come back from a trip and the wind shifted. And I don't have the wind at my back after well, fighting it to get somewhere. But that's, that's, that's really the only complaint that I have. A narrow shoulder. <laughs> remember, we are traffic. Bicyclists are traffic. And we ride in the roadway. So a road like Freemansburg or William Penn Highway. Um, yes, there are some sections of it that are a bit challenging. But really, they're challenging for the motorist. They're not challenging for the properly riding cyclist. And usually we can find alternatives. So, for example, I I like Madison Street in Bethlehem over um, Eaton Avenue. Is it Easton Avenue? Eaton Avenue. Easton there. Easton Avenue. Uh, I can ride on Easton Avenue. I do hold the traffic, uh, uh, you know, motorized vehicles back behind me. Um, So, you know, uh, to be polite and also because I don't need all that exhaust in my face, uh, I'll use Madison, which is a lovely ride, fantastic ride. Um, same thing when I'm going out Hanover. Yes, I can ride between Pennsylvania Avenue and Club Avenue there, that little piece with parking on both sides and hold all the traffic back behind me for a quarter mile. Um, or I can ride that little alley to the right, take my time. And, and uh, I've met several people that live back there, and we've developed friendships over the years because I've been riding that same route for, for what, 25 years. Yannicka so. was talking about how hilly it can be around in the Lehigh Valley, and that was one of my main concerns when we first went car free and started riding our bicycles and what i have found is that the longer i ride a particular route the more flat route we find around the hilly roads you know you're talking about madison you could take madison all the way up until it meets linden but there are a lot of little streets back over by bethlehem catholic high school that aren't nearly as hilly even though madison's not really a very hilly road but for every block that's hilly there's a block that's not as steep or as long of a hill no meg how do you deal with um an overly aggressive motorist, somebody who's honking at you or... I do exactly what Steve has told me to do, which is smile and say, have a nice day. Steve, does that work? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had a car the other day was passing me, and I was on Hanover Avenue, which is a four-lane road. I had a lane all to myself, but sometimes motorists think they know better than I do about how to bicycle. And the people, the four people in this car, they were young, and they were yelling at me to get off the road. And I just kept waving and saying, have a great day, have a great day. And there was a young girl in the back seat. And after the third or fourth time I said it, she said, yeah, have a great day. And and she started (laughs) telling the other people in the car, he's having a great day. And I am. I I try to be patient with motorists because, after all, they're locked in a cage. They're surrounded (laughs) by fumes. They're not getting any exercise. So I, I try to be patient with them. And I don't find it very difficult because I'm in a very good mood because I'm... I'm riding my bike. I have a 10-year-old who rides his own bicycle in front of us, and I also have young nephews that we sometimes ride with. And anytime we're riding, I I instruct them to not get worried when there are cars around. You know, you are where you are supposed to be. You are supposed to be in the flow of traffic. You are part of traffic. If you are with an adult, you should be riding in the street as part of traffic. And if somebody honks at you, that's because they're upset, not because you're doing something wrong. 
This June, um, Cat is sponsoring a bike safe tour. Can you tell me a little about that, please? We're, we're not actually the sponsors uh, of the uh, Patrick Gitsma Bike Safe Tour. It's coming out of Brinningsville, and I understand that um, it's sponsored by or put together by a number of his friends and family members. But what we decided to do in the spirit, and I think this is something that Patrick would have wanted, is that if you give $100 to this ride or sponsor a rider in this ride, we'll give you a $50 uh, 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 traffic skills class. So in other words, the whole $100 goes to the Patrick Gitsma Education Fund for the children, and you also get education so that we can bring you up to speed. Uh, the type of uh, riding that Patrick did was very, very effective. And that, by the way, is the best way to keep motorists from being annoyed at you, um, is to ride effectively, predictably, and effectively. That is uh, assertively, we call it. You don't need to deliberately get in anybody's way, but you do need to define where you're going to be and ride in the safest part of the roadway for a cyclist. Stop at red lights, don't ride the wrong way on the street, don't have lights at night, and don't ride on the sidewalk. So it's very important to play by the rules. That's what motorists want to see. That's what they're annoyed about, the cyclists that don't play by the rules. That's my opinion. I would like to just mention, too, anybody that's interested in, in biking for transportation, you really ought to come down. We have 75 years' experience. Me, Scott, and Frank have 75 years' experience bike commuting. We're available on Thursday nights from 5 to 9 and on Saturdays from 8 to 4 behind the Boyd, 14 West Raspberry Street. And I'll just say that, you know, the best way that I trained to be commuting by bicycle was to commute by bicycle. There wasn't anything that I could do other than getting on my bike that would prepare me for being on my bike. You know, I hear people sometimes talking about, yeah, I really want to do that, but I have to get in shape. You will not get in the kind of shape that you'll get if you're not riding your bicycle. I mean, it's amazing how quickly the weight will come off, how quickly your muscles will build up, your cardiovascular system will get into gear. There's nothing else like it. So where can people find out more about the um, Bike Safe Tour? Uh, the Bike Safe Tour, if you just put into any search engine the words car free, C A R and F R E E, one of the top three websites is going to be CAT, Coalition for Appropriate Transportation. On the home page, the top link is the Patrick Itzema Tour, Bike Safe Tour. It's coming out of Brininsville. You can also, uh, the other classes that we have too, the uh, basic and the advanced mechanic classes, if you donate twice the cost of the class, you get the, the, the satisfaction of contributing that much money to the uh, education fund for the children of Patrick. And you also get the class. You get the class for free. Pa uh, Kat's going to uh, put that up, again, in the spirit of what Patrick gets meant to us as an excellent rider who went everywhere by bike. Well, we certainly miss him here in the Lehigh Valley, and I know you do as a friend of his. Any final words for us? Well, sell your car, ride your bike. <laughs> <laughs> we have a few minutes left. I think that uh, the, the idea of car free, like I said, this is not something that you do for the environment, although it's great for the environment. It's not something you do because it costs less money, although it costs a lot less money. It's not something that you do because you want to make a difference in congestion or any of these other things. You do it because it feels so great. It's been one of the most empowering and exciting and enthralling decisions that my family has made to go car free. You know, we just get so excited about getting on our bikes. Our boys get excited about getting on the bikes. It's just a lifestyle that's very freeing and enlivening. How do you answer the people who say that there's no place to shower and you're dirty and filthy when you're done? Well, I, I, I think that, you know, that's making a, a lot of assumptions there. Um, first off, the assumption that your bicycle, that you're using a bicycle or maybe jogging to work. I, uh, uh, John Fasolka used to jog to work at his, his job as uh, director of parks in Allentown. He'd carry his little bag lunch and jog to work. I imagine he had a shower. It was okay for him to be a little bit dirty when he got to work. He's a parks director. I don't know. I, I think there's a, there's a lot of questions that come up. I can tell you there's reasons why only one in 2,000 people bike to work. Most of them, though, are social. They are not obstacles that cannot be overcome. So uh, I think the primary thing is to wrap your brain around the attitudes you need in order to be a successful cyclist. 
Well, that's great. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight. Meg, Buck, Steve Schmidt, both of CAT, along with uh, Bethlehem Police Commissioner Jason Schiffer, CAT Bike Director Scott Slingerland, CAT Shop Manager Frank Pavlik, and Bicycle Commuter Yannicka Bose. Thank you all for coming here to uh, help us talk about bicycle safety and cycling in the Lehigh Valley for uh, Lehigh Valley Discourse. Uh, and by the way, if you're interested in giving up your car, you can donate your car to support programming like this on WDIY. And there's info at WDIY.org. My name's Arnie Lichten. This has been Lehigh Valley Discourse on WDIY Allentown, listener-supported community public radio.